Hey everyone, our GTX 1080 Ti review should already be online and now we are tearing it down. So this will be part of our progress to building a liquid cooled 1080 Ti as we've done in the past. If you saw our 1080 Ti review, it shows some thermal versus frequency charts where the thing is clearly limited by its temperature headroom. So we're gonna fix that problem. And this time, unlike before, we'll be measuring VRM temps in the process. Before getting to that, this teardown will be brought to you by iFixit. We're gonna be using their tools for the whole thing. We have the iFixit Pro Tech Toolkit here, which is one that I use regularly for these teardowns. So quite happy to have it on as a show sponsor. You can use code GAMERSNEXUS at iFixit.com to get $5 off. The Pro Tech Toolkit is one of their mid-priced items. Then they've got these large 128-bit kits as well, which we might throw to for some other things. So let's get to it, this thing. The 1080 Ti is similar to the 1080. It has the, in terms of the, the design anyway, of the reference cooler. So it's got the back plate that's pretty straightforward, metal black back plate with the, uh, just a couple tiny screws around the edges. Underneath it, I would imagine just like the 1080, it's probably got those really annoying 3.5 millimeter Allen head screws, which I don't know why they chose that size. And then about a million more over here. Now, if we were just going to remove the cooler and place a completely new base plate on there, maybe if you're doing a water block, that would be a much easier job. Because I want to put one of these on there, this is an EVGA hybrid cooler. So this is their uh, one from the 980 Ti and the 1080. It's the same thing. It's an Ace Attack Gen 4.5 cooler. It's worked pretty well in our mods in the past. You can buy them separately. We're gonna put that on uh, and that requires taking the entire thing apart, which is kind of unfortunate because they don't always go back the same way. This is the 1080 Founders Edition card. It required a bit of effort to get it back to the way it was originally. So let's start with it. The back, we're gonna take the large screws off first. I think I'm gonna modify my approach to this from previously. So I think the new approach is going to be to completely remove the cooler and separate the cooler and the PCB and then take the cooler apart rather than take it all apart with the PCB still on there. That should make it easier to deal with the thermal pads. So if you're wondering, this is a size Phillips 00. zero. Okay, so how many screws is that just for the back plate? So if you're keeping track, it's 3, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 screws just to get the back plate loose. And the back plate has no special thermal pads or anything on the inside. In fact, it barely touches the PCB at all. It's got this raised outside. But as you'll see in our numbers for the review, the PCB back, the back of the PCB is actually not that warm. So it's really not bad, even though it looks like it doesn't do a whole lot. It doesn't seem to be increasing temperature in any substantial way, but it's also not decreasing in any substantial way. Uh, the ICX coolers do a much better job with their back plate. One small pad there. What does that even attach to? Let's see. So that looks like it's going down on this IC right here. I'll have to send that to Buildzoid for part of his VRM analysis. <coughs> Buildzoid will have a VRM analysis for us, by the way, uh, tomorrow or the next day, depending on when you see this. Okay, so with the back plate off, now we need to work on removing all these tiny things. What size are these? Four? These might be four, actually. Oh, I stand corrected. They're not 3.5, they are four. So at this point we can more or less separate the PCB and the plate. You can see them kind of starting to separate. The thing I've learned is I, I prefer to separate them with the PCB down on the table. That way the thermal pads tend to stick to where they are on the PCB, not come off with the cooler. But first we do have to take these screws out. And there are five of these. Okay, there's our IO, and now we just have the card in the cooler. So let's pull these apart. Now previously, if you've watched previous teardowns, I tend to start taking these screws out next around the radial fan, and that frees up 
this. So the way it'll separate is this piece here uh, is part of the shroud. Underneath it is the vapor chamber cooler, which is really just a fin stack with the vapor chamber in it. We already disconnected that. So this pulls off, that pulls off, this black piece pulls off, and then there are these pieces here, this uh, C-shaped bracket. There are two of those that pull off, and then uh, there's another piece under here normally. Uh, actually, this is it right here. So a lot of small pieces, but we can actually accelerate this a bit by doing it this way. And now I'm connected by screws. So we've got the fan and the LED. Kind of hold this here, disconnect that. Try not to pull by the cable, but whatever. Clean it up for this. So uh, what we've got is a couple things. This PCB is a good bit different from the 1080 Founders Edition. The GPU is, as you can see, GPU 102-350K1A1. Uh, so that's the, the full SKU. Now, as I've explained in the past, generally an A rev means it's production ready. A1, generally in my experience in the industry, when I worked elsewhere, A1 would mean it was the first shipping uh, production ready rev. And later you might see an A2 if they make a, an update of some kind. So our first rev, GP102 is the new GPU rather than GP104, 106, or what have you, 107. Uh, and 350 is the sub number for the SKU. In terms of the memory layout, we're missing a module here. And you can see we've got 11 gigabytes in total. So uh, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 modules at 1 gigabyte each. These are Micron, and do they have a SKU on them? Uh, D9VRL. Uh, these are the new Micron G G5X or GDDR5X memory SKUs, which go up to 11 gigabits per second rather than the 10 previously. And... The VRM, we've got some thermal pads still covering things, but can more or less figure everything out. Uh, Buildzoid will have a more detailed video on this for us on our channel, but these are Fairchild FETs. And so the format here, it's a seven phase VRM design, uh, but they are doing two FETs per phase. So it's splitting the current, which spreads the heat and uh, it should help a bit with power delivery, but I'll leave all of that to Buildzoid's discussion. He is the pro overclocker after all. Uh, power, you can see we've got eight, six, and pinout for, or solder points for another eight pin here. If a board partner wanted to buy this PCB instead of making their own, they could solder their power header here rather than up here. That's really the only reason that exists. I don't think you'll see a, a three header set up on a reference board. It's possible, but if you see three power headers at all, it will probably be a custom board. There are a couple of other places where you can see there, there are things missing, uh, like here, here, the memory module, of course, and um, uh, that's really, that's most of it. The, this is your inductor bank, capacitor bank, MOSFETs for the actual uh, power management and delivery. We have some doubling going on, and uh, I think that more or less covers the basics of the VRM. The GPU is a good deal bigger than the GTX 1080 GPU, which we might have some shots of that still. If you wanted to see a size comparison, it's a bit larger. It has 28 SMs rather than 20 SMs. And then for the cooler itself, which we still have to take apart, the cooler, here's your vapor chamber plus fin stack. We have the thermal pads for each G5X module, thermal pads that are a bit beat up for the uh, capacitor banks, big hole where the inductors go because those run really hot and there's no reason to stick thermal pads on them better, just expose them to air. Uh, although they can take quite a bit of heat because it's just literally a copper coil inside of a heat sink. And then this is the, uh, the FETs, doublers, all that stuff. So uh, we need to pull this apart so that I can get the base plate and put the base plate back on and use that 
for the foundation of our mod. <clears throat> Okay, that's going to be socketed, so we can't remove that yet. Snapped that last time with the 1080 because on the 980 it was adhesive, and now they socket it. So if you try to pull it off, it'll break. Well, that's convenient. The, the point of this is to get the thermal pads to not just stick to the table. We're, we're trying to give it a surface so it's elevated. size. First, there we go. Alright, so there's the acrylic or polycarbonate window. There's the shroud. Here's the heat sink. Four more screws here. I don't know that we need to disconnect those. Because ideally, ideally we leave this uh, radial fan in place so that there's still some cooling on the VRMs. And having the base plate there will certainly help. And as you can see, thermal pads are all still there. So thank you. Uh, I fix it for the cutting board, <laughs> Improv improvised cutting board. Pads are still there. So we have VRM cooling capabilities. The question is, will I be able to fit this in without taking out the rest of the screws. That looks like it will fit. Yeah, so I think we can actually leave those screws in. I'm not sure what they're holding in actually. Let's see. I think they're just, yeah, they're holding the outer frame to the inner part. This, this right here, this black part of the frame is being held into this part of the frame by these four screws. So we could separate them, which wouldn't really teach us anything we haven't already learned from the 1080 teardown because this is the same cooler. This thing's all the same. There's a part, so this looks like it's actually a cooling, like it looks like something that could actually cool components, but it's really for looks because there's a partition in here. So there's no air that can go through here and wick heat because it's just gonna get blocked. Uh, and there's no suction from this fan because again, there's a partition. So that's entirely for looks. Doesn't actually do anything really. Uh, might do something, but it's, it's very, it's insignificant, <laughs> whatever it does. Uh, the rest, the, the real cooling's all right here. So I think we're good. I think that actually is the easiest teardown ever for a video card. Um, <clears throat> the unit itself is not, uh, not necessarily the easiest out of all the video cards in terms of the amount of screws. But once you kind of have an idea for what you're doing, it's not bad. We The PCB will be looked at separately. Part two, uh, we will build up the cooler. And then uh, the, plan is, <clears throat> the plan is once we've got all this assembled, test it with the liquid cooler. And this will go live after PAX, by the way. Uh, so this, this part of the video is before PAX or during PAX. We have PAX this weekend. And that means no final conclusion until I'm back, which will be Monday, Sunday night, Monday, so we'll have something up by Tuesday. Uh, that'll have the results, and we'll be able to see if liquid cooling the GPU brings down the core temperature enough, which it should, so that even just without any overclock, just stock with the new cooler, theoretically Boost 3.0 should allow the clock to go higher because it will no longer have that thermal limitation, which is imposed by NVIDIA's own cooler. This cooler is not very good. <laughs> it's, uh, with an auto fan speed, it tends to max out around 50% unless you really stress it. At 50%, it's a bearable noise level. You can actually tolerate it, but you definitely get some more clock spikiness. Whereas once you force it to 80%, it generally boosts a bit higher and it's way more stable. So you'll have fewer frame drops. Unfortunately, it's also intolerable for noise. So liquid will fix that. The question is, what will happen when we put some thermal probes on here, some thermal couples, and uh, see if the VRM temps go up as a result of that mod, since we'll be taking away some of the cooling potential for the VRM. So I'm really interested about that. We haven't done that before. Thank you for watching. As always, subscribe for the next parts of this series. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us make more videos like this. And as always, links in the description below for more information. You can use the code gamersnexus at ifixit.com if you liked any of these tools. They have them there, five bucks off. 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.